As we gather around the table of the Lord, let us prepare our hearts to break bread together, mindful to draw near with reverence and fear of the Lord. We come with faith and repentant hearts to renew our covenant and experience the Lord's presence. To prepare for the sacred time, we should ensure that we have on hand enough bread and wine or juice for all participating believers. In preparing the amount, aim for what is set aside to be fully consumed. You may use the best bread or whatever that is available presented on a clean plate. Likewise, juice or wine should be prepared and poured into clean cups or glasses. The bread and juice or wine can be arranged on a serving tray and placed on the coffee table or dining table around which the household or small group is gathered. Distribute the elements to those participating in the communion, but wait for the priest to instruct before partaking of it together. After the Holy Communion meal, the remaining bread and juice or wine should be consumed normally at the end of the service. May the Lord's presence be with us all in this meal. all of you warmly in the name of Christ, especially those watching in uh, from uh, homes all across uh, Singapore, in the Archdeaconry of, of Singapore, to, to this very uh, momentous and important uh, event. Uh, I'm Terry Wong, the Vicar of the Cathedral. It's my joy uh, to, to serve you in this part of the service. So please stand for the opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Indeed, brothers and sisters, we have come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His holy word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins, and to seek His grace, that through His Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to His service. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to kneel or sit as we bring our hearts to the Lord. We pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Receive God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through jesus christ our lord amen this then and O lord open our lips and our mouth, the mouth shall proclaim your, your praise. praise let us worship the lord All praise to his name. and glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Remain standing as we continue to worship the Lord together. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation, you are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe your own to us. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation, and you are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe your
Hallelujah. Amen. Please join me in saying the collect for the eighth Sunday of the Trinity. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, what God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, please, for the reading of Scripture. The first reading is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 8. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel recorded in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, recorded by St. Luke, beginning to read from the 14th verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, reading from verse 14. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten and saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. 
For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Lord, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you that you are our faithful God. You provide for your children through all the changing scenes of life. We thank you, Father, for Jesus, our incomparable shepherd, in whom we have everything we need. Speak to us out of your word and draw us to yourself that we might find strength to glorify you in this hard-pressed hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, whether you're at home or here in this cathedral. I'm very grateful to the Lord for the gift of today. It is wonderful to be gathered as the household of God, electronically connected across our 27 parishes in Singapore. And we are joined by some of our deanery leaders, as well as some friends, both local and overseas. One household of God, made up of many households and many small groups who are gathered in their own premises, but taking part in this one service where we will also later on partake of Holy Communion together. I'm here in the cathedral with my own immediate family, and uh, that includes one of my grandchildren, and with some representatives uh, from the wider church, which for me is the diocese. We are very grateful, friends, for all who have worked so hard to make this service possible. We have gathered in this way because of the extraordinary circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic. The world as we knew it has changed very quickly. The daily commuting from home to office, the ease with which we could gather socially as we like, the freedom to travel, whether for business or recreation or to be with our loved ones, all these have gone and we don't know for how long. At the start of COVID-19, most of us thought it would soon be over. Uh, like SARS. Today, six months later, we know it's going to be a long haul, a tough journey to contain the virus and to overcome all the social and economic repercussions of the pandemic. But it is not all negative. God is at work in the midst of the adversity to reset the world and the church, to reset it according to his design and to reveal his saving love in Christ Jesus. The people of God, we need God's strength to overcome the crisis, to radiate the light of God's love in the midst of all the hardship and the gloom, and to arrive at a new normal. We can't get there without the strength of the Lord. To arrive at a new normal as robust disciples of Jesus. God provides His strength in many ways, and today I want to focus on just one important means of grace, namely, Holy Communion, a provision not to be neglected. I have three words to bring to you this morning out of the scriptures regarding Holy Communion. Three words, remember, renew, and receive. Our text is Luke 22, 14 to 22, and many will find it helpful to have the scriptures opened before us. So it's Luke 22, 14 to 22. Firstly, remember the Lord. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. That's verse 19. The center of the Christian faith 
is not a set of rules nor a set of practices. The center of our faith is the person, the person of Jesus Christ the Lord. Our new life in God is centered on Jesus and our relationship with Him. When we partake of Holy Communion, we remember Jesus. We recenter on Jesus. Remember, because as fallen human beings, we so easily forget the one who laid down his life so that we can live. Jesus never forgets his own, but we, we are prone to forget our Savior and our Shepherd. Uh, life throws so many things at us. We are crowded out <laughs> by our own pursuits, the pressures, the anxieties. So we very easily lose the center which actually holds our life together. The center, beloved, is Jesus. God the Son who took hum human flesh upon himself shared an earthly life, was crucified on the cross, rose again on the third day, and is coming back in glory. It is Jesus and what he has done for us that gives hope and meaning and purpose to our everyday lives. And to remind us of this, <laughs> that it is him and our relationship with him, to remind us of this, he gave us an act to perform, a meal to share, which we call Holy Communion, or the Lord's Supper, or the breaking of bread. To remember Jesus is to remember his amazing love for you. Jesus knew the worst about us when he went to the cross to die for our sins and set us free. He knew the worst about us because in this passage we read in verse 21 Jesus says behold the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table the nature of human sinfulness is such that we are all capable of betraying someone we are close to there is a twistedness a falseness, a self-centeredness, a slavery to sin that has gripped every human heart. So when we are honest with ourselves, we know what wretched sinners we are. Jesus also knows, but that did not stop him from going to the cross for us. And so in our Anglican Holy Communion liturgy, we have these words in the communion part of the service, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples. In the same night he was betrayed, that was when Jesus instituted the meal that signaled his death, the giving up of himself to forgive wretched sinners like you and me, to win our pardon to redeem us from our guilty standing before God and to set us free. Set us free from the chains of sin. Set us free for new life. Amazing grace. So, the institution of this meal that we are about to partake is interwoven with the betrayal story. Knowing what we are capable of, yet, he went to the cross for us. That's how much Jesus loves us. So this meal brings us to encounter the love of Christ. To remember Jesus is also to remember his desire for his people. That's what happens, right? When you remember a loved one who has passed away, you remember the things that are precious to that loved one. What is precious to Jesus is that we should love one another. 
That's why he prayed in that high priestly prayer before he went to the cross. He prayed to the Father that all who believe in him may be one, that the world may believe that you, Father, have sent me, that there should be a true oneness among Christian people, a oneness that reflects the unity of the triune God. So, my friends, when we come to Holy Communion, we not only bind ourselves to the Lord, we also bind ourselves to each other as the body of Christ. As we remember Christ on the cross and how He cancelled our debt, we choose to forgive those who have wronged us and done inexcusable things against us. We choose to forgive. We choose, because we remember His love, we choose to forgive those who have hurt us and wronged us. For love of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life so that God may be glorified. And that is why St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 11 he reminds us that in celebrating the Lord's Supper, we are to recognize the body of Christ. We are to recognize that we are not just individuals. We are part of the family of God. In the case of the Anglican Church, we are an ordered family. We recognize that. And we recognize our duty to love and honor one another. So in Holy Communion, we remember Jesus not as a distant memory, but as alive and living in our midst. And we celebrate His elevated presence among us. We celebrate it by our reverence, our reverential love for Him. And we celebrate it by loving and honouring and being united by His love. So first, remember the Lord. Second, renew the covenant. When Jesus broke bread and shared the cup at the Last Supper, He was pointing to the new covenant He was about to inaugurate at the cross. And so in verse 20, when He takes the cup, He describes this is the cup, my cup, which is the new covenant in my blood. New covenant is language from Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. The prophet Jeremiah in 6th century BC, he foresaw a new action, a new action by God beyond the exodus from Egypt, beyond the covenant at Mount Sinai, a new action by which God would bestow forgiveness on all people and bring inner renewal of heart. So Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34, this is what the Word of God says. This is 570, 580 years before the birth of Christ. This is what Jeremiah the prophet foresaw. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. And Jesus at the Last Supper is saying that promised day has come. It has come and He is going to launch it. He's going to launch the new covenant by going to the cross, by defeating sin, by rising from the dead, and being the new sh shepherd king of the world. So the promised kingdom of God is fulfilled at the cross. That's why he says, I will no longer eat. I will not eat of the Passover. I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God is fulfilled. And his death and resurrection has launched a new day, a new age. The new creation has begun. The new covenant has been established. Our sins are forgiven. And not only that, friends, when we come to Christ, He changes our heart. 
by the Spirit. I will put my law within your heart. You think differently and you act differently. Peter, of course, built on this on the day of Pentecost when he said to the crowd, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, the, the Lord's Supper, it marks God's greater deliverance, greater than the Exodus and greater than the Old Covenant based on the Mosaic Sinai law. That great deliverance has come through Jesus Christ. All this happened at the Jewish Passover meal because the Jewish Passover, which celebrated the deliverance of Israel from oppression in Egypt, is superseded by the Lord's Supper, which celebrates not just Israel, but mankind's deliverance from sin itself. Notice, my friends, the way Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. Uh, there are four action verbs piling up on each other. He took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to them. This fourfold action gives Holy Communion or the Last Supper, gives it a certain dignity, you see. There's a solemnity. It was designed for the people of God in all ages until he returns. It is not something he did on the run. He did it with deliberate care. So we, the church today, we are now remembering. We are now renewing the covenant. So when you and I partake of the Holy Communion, that's what happens. We renew this new covenant where our sins are forgiven and we are given new hearts and we grow in holiness and we serve God's world. How do we renew the covenant? We renew the covenant by fully identifying with Jesus. So in John 6, Jesus will say, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no part in me. What he means is you are fully identified with him as saviour. You acknowledge, I cannot present myself to God on my own merit. Jesus Christ, you're my saviour. When I was a young boy, 14 years old, I worshipped at Christ Church in Farrow Park, and the priest then, Kenan Babu, taught me what to say when I come for communion. And I've never forgotten it, and it's been precious to me. He said, when you're there, the communion to receive the bread and the wine. This is a prayer you can use. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Precious economical words, but very real. I renew the covenant. I'm a sinner needing grace, needing forgiveness. I come in Jesus' name. So we fully identify with Jesus as Savior. We fully identify with Jesus as Lord. We acknowledge him to be our one and only Lord to whom we give total allegiance. In a covenant, we also make covenant promises, friends. So when we renew the covenant, we commit to walk in newness of life. That's our covenant obligation. So we receive this new and amazing grace and we say to the Lord, I want to live in your way. I commit myself to be your follower. So what happens is when we fail, we repent and confess our sins, trusting God to restore us. So when we have Holy Communion, we have the opportunity to renew the covenant, to receive strength to walk in newness of life. And that's my third word, right? Remember the Lord, renew the covenant. Third, receive divine strength. When we remember the Lord and renew the covenant, we will receive covenant blessings. You renew the covenant, you're restored, and God, He wants to bless you with His protection, 
His provision, and above all, His presence. Today, there are many covenant blessings, but today I want to highlight just one. The covenant blessing of divine strength. The covenant blessing of divine strength. Because life can be tough. And all of us will face those stretches when we are depleted, discouraged, and have come to an end of ourselves. So our Old Testament reading describes Elijah in such a condition. He is at the point of what, using today's language, we would call the point of a severe meltdown. He can't function anymore. He actually says, I've had enough, O Lord. Take away my life. I am no better than my father's. Elijah says these words while he's on a journey. It's not clear whether he knows where he's going to, but God knows he's going to bring him back to Mount Horeb. So Elijah is actually exhausted after the intensity of ministry. He's been battling with the false prophets and turning the people back to God, but he didn't clinch it, you see because there was another power beyond Ahab, the power of Jezebel. So he's exhausted by the ministry and he's bitterly disappointed by the final outcome. That's a recipe for depression. But God cares for him. And God cares for him by sending him an angel who prepares hot cakes and a jar of water for him in the wilderness. And the angel says to him, arise and eat for the journey is too great for you. Arise and eat. And later on in the text we read, Elijah ate and drank and went in the strength of that food. I said, invite you wherever you are. Is the journey too hard for you? Especially now in the uncertainty and in the fears that are present because of the COVID pandemic. Is the journey too hard for you? But God has supplied spiritual food, I believe, through Holy Communion. I believe that when Holy Communion is received with faith and thanksgiving, I repeat, I, when you receive the elements by faith and thanksgiving, the bread and the wine can be the means by which God imparts spiritual strength. In other words, when we come with faith, Holy Communion becomes the means of grace by which God provides spiritual strength, spiritual food, if you like, for the soul. And Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood. We do well not to overpress what is means. I don't think we are required to believe in a change of substance. But neither should we water it down to mean just symbolic. This represents. So somewhere between the two, it seems to me, that Christ's words can accommodate the sense in which the bread and wine convey the very life of God. They convey that spiritual life and vitality when it is received rightly by faith. That's why we Anglicans call it a sacrament. A sacrament is an act, a means by which we receive outward and external elements that bring to us inward and spiritual grace. So baptism and Holy Communion, the use of water, the use of bread and wine. So we use something outward, but by faith, it becomes spiritual grace, God's grace, God's new life in us. And the inward spiritual grace that is received or released into one's life through Holy Communion 
is to be spiritually nourished and made whole for life's journey. And so it's not wrong if you are struggling with insomnia or bitterness or you're finding you're depleted to ask God to strengthen you as you receive Holy Communion by faith. So it's strength for the journey, but it's also strength for a life of proclaiming Christ. Because I want you to know, friends, we need spiritual strength to be faithful witnesses of Jesus. We need strength, strength to care for others, courage to talk about Jesus. We need spiritual strength to proclaim Jesus as King and Lord because it's a contested, skeptical, and not infrequently hostile world. So you need this strength to stand up for Jesus. Courage to give personal testimony to Him. Not just your words, but the, the matching of your own life. You need divine strength. So we take Holy Communion with a grateful heart because of the tremendous love. But we also take Holy Communion with a desirous heart. We want to glorify the Lord. We want our lives to shine for Him. And the only way you can be fruitful is if you abide in Him. That's what Jesus said. No branch can bear fruit on its, by itself. It must abide in the vine. And that's what happens in Holy Communion. So let me summarize. Through Holy Communion, we remember the Lord Jesus, His love for us, the costly victory He won on the cross, and His purpose for our lives. Through Holy Communion, we renew our covenant relationship with God. We are cleansed, we are restored, we are set on the road with hearts set free to serve. And through Holy Communion, we receive divine strength for life's journey and to be Christ's witnesses in this world. That is why Holy Communion is a provision not to be neglected. So we are hard pressed in COVID times. We meaning your pastors, the priests, the deaconesses and myself. We are hard pressed to make this provision accessible because it's God's means of grace. We are entrusted to be shepherds of God's flock and so we have sought that this means of grace should also be available to God's people, made available not in a frantic or in an expedient way, you know, but made available in a responsible way, in keeping with Holy Scripture and having good pastoral discipline. So we've worked away, friends, in which we can make this available to you. I hasten to add, Holy Communion is not the only means of grace. There are several means of grace that God has given to strengthen His people. The Word of God, prayer, fellowship, worship. So Holy Communion is not the only, and we shouldn't get unbalanced, but Holy Communion is an important means of grace. We are strengthened by Christ's life when we receive the elements with faith and thanksgiving. There is nothing magical about the elements. We don't venerate the elements, and we should avoid any superstitions about the elements. Neither are we using Holy Communion as a way of manipulating God. We do this and we must be blessed. We don't do that. We don't use it as a ritual to get what we want. We come to Holy Communion to receive, to receive from God what He promised to give through this. And we trust Him. And we don't come to Holy Communion in an individualistic way, just me and my life and what I need. We come discerning the body. We come as a connected body of Christ to receive the sacrament. 
So because of the COVID restrictions and the uncertain road ahead, and in God's grace, our diocese has parishes, parishes of different sizes. We're going to have a special dispensation for the practice of Holy Communion from today, August 2nd, till 31st October. It's a dispensation which both Bishop Designate Titus and I, after talking, you know, friends, different ones have different views, very deep-seated views about the sacrament. But I trust we've done the best we can to provide ways that are agreeable to Holy Scripture and that meet the need of God's people, that it is from the Father's heart and from the Father's hand. So a special dispensation on three forms by which our members, members of the Anglican Church in Singapore, can partake of Holy Communion. Three forms. First, communion to a congregation that physically gathers as per our normal services, but now with COVID regulations. Physically present, keeping safe safety uh, measures, safe distancing, and we receive as we normally do. Second, communion by extension from a common table in which dispersed groups of believers receive already consecrated, already consecrated by a priest, as is our practice in our ordered house, already consecrated, and then licensed lay readers take it out to households, people in the hospital, homebound, and to the small groups. So that's the second way. The third is what we are inaugurating with holy fear of God and holy love for God today, an online communion service in which congregation members who are electronically present and connected, we simultaneously participate in a common breaking of the bread service led by a priest. So this dispensation from today till 31st of October, 31st of October, friends, because a bishop designate Titus will be installed as the new bishop on October 18. And then he can review the practice, discuss with the leaders, but most of all, discern from the Lord the way forward. So in this period, every parish under the leadership of the vicar is to decide which form or which combination of forms is best suited for the congregations given each congregation's context. So we take the context, we take size, we take practice, we take understanding, and then we say, this is how we will make this means of grace available. Beloved people of God, I will, in God's grace, complete my role as diocesan bishop at the end of this month, at the end of August. As you have prayed for me and supported me, please do the same for Canon Dr. Titus Chung, to whom I will pass the mantle of diocesan leadership. Allow me then, as I wrap up God's word, allow me an opportunity to thank God in your presence for the joy he has given me to equip his church collectively since the COVID outbreak. It has been a gift and a privilege for me to equip you, people of God, with Scripture. We had 14 midweek online sermons. To equip you with the Spirit. We had a memorable high point in our life. Pentecost Sunday service across the whole diocese, including the deaneries on May 31st. And to equip you with the sacrament, the teaching and provision of Holy Communion, to equip you for the next unprecedented stage of our journey. My wife and I, family, we are part, different role, but we're part of this community, so it's going to be our journey with you as God's people. Today, as you think over the Word of God and hear His voice, 
And I invite you now to close your eyes for a moment. Open your heart, beloved, to the God who loves you. Because the Word of God is calling us to approach God with faith and love, to receive His strength for the journey you are on. And we receive His strength through every means of grace, including Holy Communion. O Lord our God, we magnify your abundant goodness. Help us by your Spirit to draw near, humbly and with holy confidence because of Jesus, to receive all that you want to give to us. Your presence and your provision is what we need for our life and witness. So help us, Lord, to draw near to you today and every day for the glory of your name. Amen. Thank you, Bishop, for sharing with us God's word. Can I ask you, you now to stand as we respond and affirm our faith together? In the Apostles' Creed. Together. I believe in God the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, only Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to sit on you for a time of intercession. People of God, let us join our hearts for intercession. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for His goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, You promised through Your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Heavenly Father, this morning we want to thank You that we are able to gather today to worship you, be nourished by your word, and shortly by the holy sacrament that we are about to partake through the online consecration of the elements of bread and wine. Truly, Lord Jesus, you have promised that you are with us even to the very end of the age. And so we experience today your sure presence. And we ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, you will bind all of us together, even though we are meeting online in an unusual way. Lord, we pray that, Lord, we will truly be one body in our Lord Jesus Christ as we learn how to gather as your people to worship you in this challenging time. So lead us, O oh God, with your steadfast hand and your outstretched arm. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. At this point, Lord, we want to remember God's people in the Dinri countries, Indonesia, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Nepal. We give you thanks, Lord, for them, for their faith life and their Christian witness. We draw alongside with them in prayer 
that they may be sustained by Christ's all-sufficient grace. And pr we pray, O oh God, that you will prepare, you will make all preparation, Lord, so that they too will soon be partaking Holy Communion in forms that honour you, Lord Jesus, and honour one another. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Dear God, we humble ourselves before you, asking that, Lord, you will heal our land, heal the nations yeah. of the de devastation caused by the COVID-19 plague. Lord, not only is the world suffering from the life-threatening illness, livelihood and mental well-being of the people are melting away. Only you, Lord, can provide a way out for us. And so we cried out for your mercy and for your unfailing love, asking that, Lord, you will heal the nation and provide deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for our newly elected government and all those in authority. May you, Lord, grant them wisdom to govern Singapore with godly values so that this nation may be directed in the ways of justice and peace and that men may honour one another and seek the common good. And as we approach the National Day, we pray for the preparation work for our National Day celebration, that all things will go smoothly and that, Lord, you will use this celebration to bless and strengthen the morale of the nation. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, in this time of leadership transition in our diocese, we want to lift up before you our Bishop Rennes, our Bishop Designate Titus, praying that, Lord, you will up Hold them by your heavenly grace. We pray for a good handling over of leadership from Bishop Rennes to Bishop Dexnet Titus. As it was for Elijah and Elisha, so it shall be for Bishop Rennes and Bishop Titus, Bishop Dexnet Titus, we pray. So Lord, we ask that you grant Bishop Dexnet double portion of wisdom and strength to lead your flock, Lord. We also want to pray for the upcoming ordination service on 23rd of August. We pray that, Lord, your sacred presence may be with us and the priests to be. We also pray for the Thanksgiving service on 30th of August for Bishop Rennes' completion of service as Bishop of Singapore. We pray that, Lord, you grant strength to the team of people organizing this event. We pray that, Lord, by your hand, you will stitch together the different parts so that all things will come together well. And may it be a delightful celebration with much thanksgiving. And lastly, Lord, we give you thanks for strengthening and sustaining your church Amen. by your divine strength in the risen life of our Lord Jesus Christ and praying that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, uh, two quick notices uh, has been prayed for. Uh, take note of the 23rd of August, we'll be having an ordination service. And on the 30th of August, uh, Thanksgiving service uh, for the ministry of our bishop as he steps down. And both services will be at 5 p.m. Uh, please stand for the offertory hymn. And offertory, uh, uh, we offer our lives to God if you are giving. Please give to your own parish. Blessed be your name. As we do so, those in our, uh, at homes, please uh, uh, take this opportunity to prepare the table, to prepare uh, to receive uh, uh, 
and, and to distribute the communion uh, later on. So please stand for the offer through him. Blessed be your name. Scripture reminds us that God is good and His love endures forever. In a season where things are uncertain, we can trust God and find grace to live each day. Let us worship today, certain of His goodness and His faithfulness. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name.
Would you receive God's blessing? The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Please stand for the closing hymn.
the service is over. God bless you and do have a good day. And the Lord be with you. Amen.